Okay, uh, so um, today um, is the 2nd of March, uh, 2023, and we'll talk about two architects, extremely different, Lori Baker and Toyo Ito. We'll begin with Lori Baker. Uh, let's read a little bit about him. He was born today, I mean, on, on March 2nd, but in 1917. Uh, Lawrence Wilfred Lowry Baker was a British-born Indian architect, renowned for his initiatives in cost-effective energy, efficient architecture, and designs that maximize, maximize space, ventilation, and light, and main, maintain an uncluttered yet striking aesthetic sensibility. Influenced by Mahatma Gandhi and his own experiences in the remote Himalayas, he promoted the revival of regional building practices and use of local materials, and combined this with a design philosophy that emphasized the responsible and prudent use of resources and energy. So again, he was born in Great Britain, but he moved to India, I don't know exactly when, and that's where he lived and worked. He was a pioneer of sustainable architecture, as well as organic architecture, incorporating in his designs, even in the late 1960s, concepts such as rainwater harvesting, minimizing usage of energy inefficient building materials, energy inefficient. Uh, I expected to say energy efficient building materials. I took the text from uh, Wikipedia, minimizing damage to the building site and seamlessly merging with the surroundings. Due to his social and humanitarian efforts to bring architecture and design to the common man, his honest use of materials, his belief in simplicity in design and in life, and his staunch Quaker belief in nonviolence, he has been called the Gandhi of architecture. Very nice and very unique because usually architects are anything but the Gandhis of architecture or the Gandhis of life. This was the man, truly an unusual man, a very sensitive man and a modest man. Although on his, uh, uh, I see there the, 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 the famous letters A-R-C-H in the pocket of his um, shirt, a Gandhian architect, Lori Baker. Here he was, a man who probably knew about suffering, uh, but uh, a man with uh, spiritual concerns and with a, with a dedication to, to life uh, from a very unusual um, philosophy. You know, that, that of uh, uh, abstracting as little as possible uh, nature and life alike. But we see him here also on a motorcycle in India, enjoying himself like a child. This British-born architect who became uh, very, very uh, respected and uh, even revered in India. He has a long, uh, I, in fact, I suggest if you are interested, uh, you can read on Wikipedia. He had a, a very complex and rich uh, life um, before doing actually architecture in other fields as well, in, in, in the social field. He, 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 was, he worked uh, uh, totally in the service of, uh, of, of fellow men, of the other human beings. Here he is, you know, uh, helping to erect a, a brick wall. He was a master of brick. Some sketches and drawings. You know, nothing uh, outrageous, nothing uh, even modern, you know, just uh, uh, accurate, um, you know, descriptions of what he want, wanted to depict in his, uh, in his sketches. Lori Baker.
Here we see the sketch on the left and the built building on the right. The same here. Center for Development Studies uh, that he built. Again, an architecture without anything ostentatious, provocative, and apparently without a lot of innovation. But I, I, I wouldn't say so, because innovation could manifest itself also in, in very um, discreet ways, at least sometimes. And also his architecture generally was not a, an expensive architecture. But look at the beauty of this wall, done exquisitely with brick, allowing also for ornament to manifest itself. Brick indeed is a, is a marvelous um, uh, construction material. Eco, <clears throat> eco sensitive housing designed by Laurie Baker. Here, the level of uh, formal innovation is higher. And uh, we could say he was even able to create some kind of a, you know, a sculpturalness or sculptural drama. But again, buildings which are not, uh, you know, uh, offensive to nature and working with brick indeed is not offensive at all to nature because brick is clay. Interesting though, uh, the access to the various floors of these buildings through that um, long uh, uh, stair. Literacy village. Um, I hope I have, uh, unfortunately, it wasn't so easy to find um, sufficient visual material about this architect. We see a little bit here, but not, not enough. Um, sorry about this. A film studio. All, the, all, all these works were done in India. I think this is a, a coffee shop actually. Yes, it's a different building. Yes, it's a coffee shop. 
And uh, as we can see, he's um, not always uh, without uh, the demon of invention um, manifesting itself. Uh, here is a spiral, and in fact, the coffee shop is, uh, uh, you know, the tables are on this very spiral. Lori Baker. You could say the small Guggenheim of coffee. And referring, of course, to the Guggenheim Museum by Frank Lloyd Wright in, in, in New York. What is this? Another house, I think, yes. Beautiful nature, and the building is, uh, you know, stepping back, so to speak. It's not trying to impose on nature some kind of, uh, you know, as uh, Winnie Mass would have said, that the outsmarting of nature. It's impossible. Somebody told me a few days ago that we arrived at a point where, you know, it's either nature or man. You cannot have any longer an harmony between them. But at that time, in India at least, I guess it was still possible. Um, but the conflict between man and nature finds itself uh, very well illustrated by the, the aforementioned uh, words by um, Stevie uh, uh, Winnie Mass, because he said uh, something about outsmarting nature. It's impossible to outsmart nature. It's like saying outsmarting God, because uh, Frank Lloyd Wright was asked in an interview when he was about 85, do you believe in God? And he said, yes, but I spell it nature. So if God, God is nature, saying outsmarting nature coincides with saying outsmarting God. That's certainly not what uh, Laurie Baker wanted to do. He didn't want to outsmart nature. An impossible task anyway. And I would say not only impossible, but also undesirable. Why should we desire to outsmart nature? Aren't we part of nature? Aren't we also nature within? What else? Because there are two natures, actually. The one outside of us, the one we usually call nature, but also the inner nature. What is inside ourselves, including our souls, our um, the psychology, our minds, but there is nature also inside, not, out, not only outside. Baker says that architecture is mostly common sense. So if you look carefully at the buildings and try to understand the materials, you should be able to solve most of the problems. Well, you know, very wishful thinking. Uh, let's, let's hope. I, I, I'm not saying he's not right. He probably is. But how many architects think in this way that architecture is mo mostly common sense? But uh, again, uh, coming back to Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, he said, Frank Lloyd Wright said, nothing is as uncommon as common sense. So, <laughs> you know, if Baker says architecture is mostly common sense, he, he, could, he, he actually says architecture is mostly about something that is very uncommon. And that is common sense. It's a paradox. The most uncommon thing is common sense. 
That's cool. I look at the plan. He was not inhibited, nor inhibiting. I mean, I, I wonder, these people didn't have, don't have building codes and, you know, rules and regulations. It seems he had complete freedom to envision a school as he wanted it to be, to be built. And look at it, it's beautiful. It's warm, it's earthy. It doesn't use concrete. It doesn't use large surfaces of glass. It doesn't need air conditioning. And they even have a lab here, as I can see. A laboratory, yes. But we also see ornaments. You say, I, I'm in a chapel or in a church. No, it's a school by Laurie Baker. Loyola Chapel and Auditorium. Uh, now, I imagine these were done after he died, you know, computerized, uh, um, they, you know, uh, drawings and renderings. It's actually an interesting uh, dual function here. You see on the right is the chapel and on the left is the theater or the auditorium. So it's, it's a building destined to both the sacred and the profane. On the right, the sacred, the chapel. On the left, the profane, the auditorium. And if you probably open these walls here, you can create a continuous space, much larger, used for, you know, conjunct, uh, you know, conjunctive uh, events. But the idea to unite you know, uh, a spiritual function with a, you know, uh, a secular one, it's interesting, I think. Uh, under a unifying uh, roof. And it's majestic. I mean, I love this chapel. I mean, who wouldn't? Lori Baker. And that light indeed comes from God. It's sublime. You don't need anything else. That light tells you everything about the, you know, the mystery of life, the mystery of creation, the mystery of spirit. Nice idea. And yes, the secular on the right ascends towards the sacred on the left, as it should be. the theater. The chapel. Uh, what is this? Uh, ah, sorry, uh, I, well, I don't have a picture of this. Uh, uh, other project he did, so my presentation about Lori Baker ends here, but I forgot I also have on this presentation a remarkable work by a student from uh, Bucharest who studied at the um, 
faculty of interior um, architecture or interior design. And after she finished her studies, she was probably around 24 years old. He went to Africa, she went to Africa and she built a library there almost with empty hands with the people of a village in Tanzania, I think. And I discovered her, I knew nothing about her on, um, I forgot what um, uh, website, uh, but a, a very important one, maybe the Zine or Inhabitat or anyway, uh, she did a great work at 24, 25. You know, she didn't have the right to signature in Romania, the country where she studied. But let's see what she built. Patricia Irimescu, a library in Tanz Tanzania, in a little village. And talking about brick, right? Talking about sustainability, talking about eco architecture. Well, here we have another great example. After Lori Baker, we see this work done. It was built even with children in this, in this village. And that's the building that Patricia Erimescu built at, I don't know, 24 or 25, maybe not even 24 yet. After she finished school, she went to, to Africa and she built this whole building. Yes, it's not a huge building, but it's um, exquisitely done. And we are going to see also the plan and the section and the sketches. Um, I think the whole cost of the building was 5,000 euros. I don't know how she obtained that money. She worked with volunteers, as you can see. Bravo to her. This is, and look, here is the majestic Kilimanjaro mountain. I mean, it's splendid. A small library in a village, but but this building brought joy to the children and the, and the people in, in this village. There are more people in the, this library than in the library at the University in Bucharest. Look at them enjoying themselves for simple things which wouldn't provoke any kind of joy in any Western uh, kid. But there in Africa, you know, even the, the smallest uh, book was an event and the uh, globe itself. Look at them, enjoying themselves, discovering books. This is beautiful. And this is how sh all students should be all over the world, to enjoy knowledge, to have curiosity, to discover. And these are the sketches of, uh, well, the, yeah, the drawings of uh, Patricia Irimescu. She was inspired by the traditional Maasai hut. Maasai is a, you know, a group of, of people in Africa. Um, I knew of, of them from, from Kenya, I don't know in Tanzania, but very interesting people, very, very tall, almost looking like uh, the Giacometti sculptures with a very strong belonging to their traditions. So we see the plan of the traditional Maasai hut on the left. And in the middle, the golden ratio. And on the right, the library that Patricia Phillips, uh, well, not uh, Patricia, Erimescu, sorry, uh, built. I, I knew an art critic, an, an architecture critic, an architect also in, uh, in New York. Her name was Patricia Phillips. And that's why I said Patricia Phillips. No, Patricia, Patricia Erimescu, Patricia Erimescu. So we see on the right, the plan of her library. Very nice. And here is a sketch showing that she was very interested in the environment. So this is indeed an eco building. The interior climate, cross ventilation, very important. She took into consideration the, the, the winds uh, or the ventilation in general. Window shutters protect the interior from sunlight, number three. Uh, then uh, roof light, transparent corrugated uh, sheet, and five um, uh, brick wall allows ventilation and visual contact interior, exterior. And the environment, banana trees and vegetation protect from hot, dusty wind, vegetable garden, shady trees reduce heat admission, and Mount, Mount Kilimanjaro. 
I think it's a great work done by by someone who, you know, you might say didn't even study architecture in, in Bucharest. She studied interior architecture. Of course, it's architecture as well. But, and these scenes, I think, are very moving. You know, children. Children contributing to the building of the of, of, of the library. And she, I remember, because I attended a, a presentation by her, she said that at first she failed, she needed some parts done with concrete, you know, the foundations perhaps, or uh, uh, she failed to create the, the proper concrete. She was the, the manager of the building site and the architect. And she tried again, and in the end, uh, they succeeded. Uh, this brick wall is magnificent. Maybe they made the bricks there on the, on the site as well. I don't know this. That's why I said maybe, but but I like very much the weaving of the bricks. That's it. <laughs>